Global ordinance for ammo down below. Chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear. That's what these gas masks are for. But as you can tell, you probably can't hear me because these things are hard to communicate with. And for those of you that think this shit is cool, it's not. Let's get real. Chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear, some scary shit. All right, and I mean, there's like a whole goon movement and everything about uh, behind gas masks because they look menacing and everything. And like, yeah, I get that, they do. Especially look at the very early versions of them in the late 1800s, early 1900s. <clears throat> but quite frankly, it's some scary shit. It really is. You got to think about what some of that stuff can do to you. And uh, as, it's, as a lot of people think about it, they think about like CS gas or tear gas and shit like that. And yeah, this helps and smoke too. Um, for example, opening scene, I didn't have a single problem breathing. Everyone else did though. But when you start getting into what happens when you are in a situation where you have to use something like this or a full seaburn suit, it's terrifying. You can't just seek cover from it. So let's not kid around and take some of this stuff a little more seriously than I see a lot of people do it. Now, to disclose this, you know, relationship with this company, Mira Safety, I've, I've met them several times, they're good people. They sent this out to me um, to do a video with, and quite frankly, I had been wanting one for quite a while from, you know, for work, for riots and shit like that when it comes to CS gas, because, <clears throat> I mean, it gets in the nose and eyes and it'll clear it all out blow some snot to keep moving on but some people just can't handle it as I'm sure you can find news clips of but uh, it just it's one less thing to worry about however there's a lot of factors to consider when you start messing with one of these all right let's get that for you one clip. my background with Seaburn um, from when I was in the Marine Corps if you don't know when you're in the Marine Corps and you go through boot camp you have to qualify in a gas chamber um, which is it's a stronger version of CS gas and that you go in there and they make you breathe it in through your gas mask You got to don it real fast don means put on doff means take off um, You got to put it on real fast before it hits you and everything But then they make you rip it off and breathe it in um, And like I said a lot of people can't handle it some it's no it's look, it's an irritant very 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 few percent of the population it Means nothing to them. It doesn't bother them um, but what it feels like is it feels like you can't breathe. Now, let me just make this clear is that's with CS gas and the others of the like, there's a lot of stuff out there and, and that stuff's not against the Geneva Convention, all right? <clears throat> Nerve agents, biological agents, stuff like that, the, uh, that basically make you boil from your inside out and blood pustules, all that disgusting, terrifying stuff. Um, if you guys have read Jack Carr's terminal list, they talk about hemorrhagic fevers and, they, and he goes in and explains a lot of that stuff like hemorrhagic fever. And he also talks about having to wear full suits and masks and everything where you can't have any seal um, broken. <clears throat> that shit is terrifying. Um, but when you're in the gas chamber and they make you breathe it in, I mean, I remember very specifically for me, I was like, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. But then once you accept it and just take it in, everything's a little easier. Um, it feels like cold fire that's keeping your lungs nice and tight so you can't breathe, but you can actually. Your body is moving, you just can't feel it. And then every year afterwards, you have to qualify by doing it. But in, if you're in infantry or you go through some other courses that are in the military, um, well, they throw cans at you like crazy. But uh, So you have to keep the stuff on you at all times. And I know in the invasion of Iraq, they had to wear full suits for weeks on end in the fighting and in the desert, stuff like that. This was all when I was a child, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> but that's some seriously scary shit. Not only do you have to think about keeping your seal tight, but there's the fact that, all right, so physical fitness, right? Obviously it's a big deal. And I mean, I'm not great at it, but when you throw one of these on, even more so you start huffing and puffing because it is tight on your face. You're breathing through a filter. And when you pop this off, which is just a simple screw, you can breathe a little easier, but obviously you want this on. Um, and 
quick tip, you want it on your non-shooting side. So I'm right-handed, strong side's on my right, support side's on my left, I keep that on my left. So I can get, you know, the gun out of my face. Um, so physical fitness inside one of these is insane. I just walking around here in the snow is crazy. Um, and I remember a couple times doing runs with gas masks and they, they'll smoke check you. So because you're breathing through a filter and you can attach two, you can have one on each side. Um, and these do have expiration dates. You need to change them. You need to keep an eye on those. Uh, this one is actually quite a while and I only breathe, oh, expiration 2041. Yeah, that's a long ass time. Obviously it's unused. Um, so I'm not gonna be here and I'm not gonna tell you about what a lot of the agents are that it'll protect against uh, because I'm not an expert and I'm not gonna pretend to be. I did do, so there's recon and decon, decontamination and uh, you know recon, recon. You find it and decon, uh, decontaminate it. I was on a decon team, we did basically a week of training and the thing that was hard about it is remembering what all these different agents are, what all these different uh, chemicals are that are not just against the Geneva Convention, but what they can do to the body and their seriousness. Essentially, you just take them all to the highest level of seriousness because they're absolutely terrifying. Um, but as for most everyday people, what they're gonna use this for is, you know, if you do work in a medical capacity or security capacity or first responder or anything like that, and you have to wear some of these for riots or civilian shit that's going on, or say we have paratroopers falling from the sky that we need to worry about. Possible video idea. Um, so the different features of this thing. One, all right, we got the filter, already talked about that. And if you're looking at this thing, that's a hose. If you look inside here in all the nasty fucking spit that I have from breathing through it, this little guy right here by my ring finger, he sits out and you can wrap your lips around it so you can hook up, hook up a canteen. And when you get this, if you go and buy it, this little hose, it comes with a canteen you can plug into. So you can drink your water safely without having to take it off. Um, it is kind of a bitch to do. And once you pull that thing closer to your face, it'll sit there and wiggle on you and be really fucking annoying. Um, now, one reason why the military way back when started making it mandatory that you shave is because of gas masks. It comes down to the seal. If you guys look, if you see all around this edge, it pushes against your face. So if it can't get a proper seal, i.e. like me, I have you know facial hair, then it's essentially useless because it's gonna get in and through there. So if you don't have a good solid seal, <clears throat> mask COVID um, it doesn't matter it's gonna get in that's why shaving especially like in the Marine Corps it's a big deal um, every single day is so important it's not just to keep up discipline it's for this stuff to keep that solid seal on you now how, uh, how you do how you carry it in military operations you have the whole thing set up and you have it inside basically a hip pack that rides on you and you train in donning and doffing essentially so the hand sign for gas, because there's hand signs for everything, is gas, 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 right? The first thing you do is you take care of yourself. You get your mask on before everything else, okay? So you need to make sure every time you pull it out, which the flap rides on the side, you pull and then pop this thing out and you put it on the same way every time. So a lot of these uh, fasteners, these straps to tighten down, you wanna have preset. The lower ones, I keep a little more loose so I can get my head in there. And typically I'll just keep the top one at the same place. Um, that way, all I gotta do when I put it on is pop it and then pull those bottom straps nice and tight and you have your seal. Now you can check your seal um, by plugging where your air comes in, which is right here with your hand, all right? <clears throat> and breathing in and if no air comes in, then you have a good seal and then you blow out the air comes out or your co2 whatever science wants to say about it comes out right here okay um and keep aware if you you need to check that after you don it you have to check your seals because then you need to move into depending on the the level of threat or what you're doing putting on the rest of your kit your suit which this kind of stuff goes on over um 
the viability of keeping something like this in your home or vehicle or something like that again like most everything else depends on your situation where you live what's going on in the area you live and what you do for work okay so say you know rewind two years we're back in the riots or you know seattle has riots every may um where your riot teams are popping gas it would be really smart for someone like me and um, people doing the work that we do to keep something like this in your kit. Now there are some that just block the nose and the mouth for just breathing and that's helpful. Obviously you can still get irritants in the eyes which if you guys don't know milk you can splash milk up there and it will really help out. Um, <clears throat> or you can just be a man. So depending on how you live and what you do and your occup occupation for um, in life it might be really important to have one of these but you need to check your expiration dates. You need to train with it regularly. For example, I haven't worn one of these in years. I haven't had to. Uh, I think last time was prior to a contract quite a few years ago. But uh, first thing I noticed, I pop it on, I can't, I can't move my head down. So this EUD juggernaut is completely useless. I gotta pop my phone back out. I can't see any of my reloads. I can't see my kit. I have to know it by feel which is obviously super important anyways. That's why you put everything back the same exact way as you always do, um, so that you know it in the dark, in a gas mask or what, what have you, it's extremely tired. So I can't see down and look at anything. All right, well, now I need to adjust. I need to make sure that it's good and I can see up here. Next thing I know is when you bring a, a weapon to the face, cut B-roll in, when you bring a weapon to the face, you don't turn your head crooked like this to get in there all right what that's going to do like riding a bike it's going to make you move really wonky camp that gun into your face so you can move upright and get those sights in um, that was one thing with mine is so my eotech if you look it doesn't have a high rise mount so i really have to tuck my eye down in there just to get that optic or get that reticle and i got to make sure you know priorities keep both eyes open so i can overlay that uh, reticle in front of me with my left eye Another thing to consider with this is right inside here, you have this thing right between your eyes. So when I go to draw a pistol and shoot, I used to be right eye dominant. Now I'm left eye dominant, but I still shoot right eye. So when I line up my gun, my sights come onto my right eye every time. However, with this, the first thing I notice, because my sights come to the center of my face when I'm out, I can't see it. I have to now adjust my pistol left or right to get it in one of my eyes to see. But that's where training with firearms comes in because my natural point of aim, you know, through training gets better and better, comes into play and I can still get shots on target relatively quick. Uh, those types of considerations are important. So if you have one of these and it's just sitting in a bag somewhere, I recommend throwing it on just like throwing on kit or throwing on a pack or whatever, moving around, throw one of these on and start shooting and see how differently you have to move. Um, behind a long gun, behind uh, getting behind a scope, I can still do it. And granted, my, my Mark 12 has Scalar Works mounts, which are phenomenal. Um, I'll do some work with those later for you guys. But uh, high rise mounts to get that optic in my eye line easier, I still have to cant the gun a little bit, which only works to certain distances before I have to start accounting for a really big offset, which is why there's bubble levels and stuff like that. Uh, so you need to make sure you're thinking about those things because it does change. There are qualifications. I've done one, it was an army call once um, for you know some contract agencies or companies or whatever, they do army calls. I had to do one in a gas mask and you shoot the whole thing with that gun canted, but it's all at like 25 yards or whatever. And even at that distance, it'll really show you what you can and cannot do with these things. They do enable you, but just to emphasize again, when you have to wear something like this, it almost becomes more important than body armor because when you have to worry about the very air you breathe, it's kind of terrifying. Um, 2020 with the reporters we had I was in the middle of we were in the middle of the street there were cops down on um, a right line on my, our right and an entire line of protesters on our left and we were in the middle of the intersection and they popped CS uh, grenades they shot them and they landed right in the feet of all of us, all three of us uh, me cameraman and reporter and I immediately grabbed them and started moving and as I kicked it away but I also remember thinking that you know like that type of gas doesn't really bother me I'm used to it because of 
prior training, which is wildly important. But uh, it would have really sucked to have to do my job if something happened right at that moment and I just got a full face of it. So something like this would have been really, really important. Now you can get, like I said, a, a nose cover and a mouth cover and then just goggles, call it square. Um, and something like this will easily fit inside like a, a Vertex sling commuter. Um, but it is so important that you train with these. These things, these glasses, or glasses, goggles, whatever you want to call them, they're super thick, all right? They're nice and clear. You want to keep them clear. There's uh, wipes you can get for them too. Um, <clears throat> and as long as you make sure you have that seal and that you train with it, quite frankly, you don't really have to do a lot of training with it. Um, and the reason I'm going to say that is we did them once a year with the gas chambers and then every, we had to meet like <laughs> annual requirements. I think it was like once a every year, maybe every six months or some shit like that, where we put on our full suits and just spent time in it. So we basically just laid there. Um, or we would go on a little fucking run or something like that, which sucks. So yeah. I don't want people glorifying these things. And that doesn't mean don't get them. That means don't glorify the situation that you could possibly possibly be in with them because it's not a joke. This stuff is not a joke. All right. Now, if you need to get one, they are going to be in a link down below. All right, I got to speak up so you can hear me because this thing's hard to talk through. How do you check your seals real quick? You breathe through here, and it also comes through here. So, block it with the palm of your hand, and breathe in. That's how you know your seal's checked. If you have a busted one, or you have none, let's just do it. I can still breathe, All right? And everything fogs up, which sucks, so. Take the palms, and it works the same without this, too. Got to make sure those seals are tight. Get out and bang. Again, a big thank you to Mirror Safety uh, for sending this out. This is, I can't even find a difference between the ones that I was issued in the Marine Corps to this. Um, besides the fact that these filters seem a lot better. Um, we definitely got some used stuff. So, uh, and real quick, big shout out to Vertex. Go ahead and check them out below. This is their, one of their shell jackets. I use it for concealed work all the time and they're absolutely amazing. As well as weapon snatcher training. We got rifle analytics, pistol analytics, scope rifle, and I'm working on a few different courses with some new instructors. Gas, too. gas, 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 gas!